Hello, we are live and recording. I am Kellyanne, I'm a bookseller with Mysterious Galaxy, and I have the pleasure of introducing our authors for tonight. Um, first and foremost, we have Molly E. Lee here with us today. And as someone has already pointed out in the chat, it is her birthday. So happy birthday, Molly. Oh. Thank you so <laughs> much for being here with us. Um, tonight we are, besides her birthday, we are here to celebrate her, her new book, which is Ember of the Night. It's a new YA fantasy that came out earlier this week. Um, it follows our protagonist, Harley, who is just waiting until she's 18 so that she can escape from the like abusive uh, alcoholic father that she's lived with and that she can save her sister from that environment. However, that plan is complicated by the fact that her blood makes her the key to stopping a war between heaven and hell, which is very, very up our alley here at Mysterious Galaxy. We love our YA fantasy. Um, tonight, we also have Catherine Blair as our conversation partner. She's the author of YA fantasy books such as The Beckoning Shadow and most recently Unchosen, which is a fiercely feminist fantasy standalone with a horrifying curse, swoon-worthy sea captains, and the power of one girl to choose her own fate. So before we get started, I'm um, just going to go over Crowdcast features with anyone who is new in our audience. On the right-hand side, as you guys probably have already seen, you have the lovely chat section. Feel free to type whatever comments you guys have and engage with the authors in that way. Uh, most importantly, maybe, are the buttons that you'll find right below our video. In green, you'll see a book that says, or a button that says buy books with signed personalized book plates, which will take you to the Mysterious Galaxy website. So you can buy Molly and Catherine's books. And then below that is the most fun for everyone, or at least in my opinion, I think, is the ask a question button. So if you click that, you can type in any questions that you have for Molly or Catherine, and they'll get to it in the second half of the event. So with that, I'm gonna hop off screen and I will see you guys at the end of the night. Have a good event. Thank you. Molly. Okay. So Yay. I have, I actually can hold it up. There we go. Your beautiful book, which Aww. is going to absolutely, and has kept me up a little bit just because I have the um, religious upbringing to be enough to be, um, you know, creeped out by everything that's gone All looking out. Coming, out of, coming out of the shadows. Oh, yeah. that, you know, the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we all know you from like your swoon worthy stories. So I wanted to know what inspired you, you to, to go, hey, you know what I should add in here? Scary demons. Hell, scariness. Some demons, right? We just yeah, we what? needed some more, some more of that. <laughs> you know what? I would rather deal with demons than half the ish going on in the world right now. But like what right, inspired exactly. you? The where did this book come from? It is so <laughs> complicated. But not, but like you have the mythos built in. I just, I want to know everything. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I love you. You're awesome. I'm a super big fan girl of you as well. Um, I actually had this uh, idea a long time ago in college. I won't say how long ago, <laughs> but I was taking an ancient religions course and it kind of just opened up my mind a little bit. And as I saw all the threads of the universal themes and all these origin stories for the, the every different culture, like the, and all their myths and legends and how so many of the themes of good and evil, like coincided and they crossed and they wove together in all different cool kinds of ways. Um, I just had the idea that I really wanted to play with a world where you didn't ever know, like who was actually evil and who was actually good. Like, and how nobody is ever wholly good or wholly evil. We all have, both parts of us inside of us and like how to play off of both of those and just kind of have characters in a world that just keeps you on your toes. And like you mentioned earlier, Constantine, I love the, I love those kind of worlds that are just like action packed in your face and also so terrifyingly real that it keeps you like looking over your shoulder. Um, yeah. So that's just kind of where the idea was born. And then um, Harley and Draven, they just stayed with me for a long time. And when my, publisher was like, I think I want to do some more paranormal. I was like, Oh, me, I have one. I have an idea. And it was just, I got really lucky because they loved it. And now uh, we were able to go with it because I've wanted to write paranormal for so long. Um, but I just was writing contemporary, which I love as well. But you're right right now. It's like, we want to escape into a world that is not ours. You know, we just, especially with from 2020 on, we've just been just needing to go to a place where we could actually 
like kick the problem's ass as opposed to being reality, you know, where yeah. we, we feel so powerless. It would be nice <laughs> so, to be able to be like, you know, we're having this out, you and me, just the evil versus the good. And just, but you know, I'm assuming in this situation, I'm the good, which, you know, Hey, might not be, but that's, I just think that's <laughs> absolutely, that's really fascinating. And that's the, I think it's interesting because the, I'm actually trying to write contemporary right now and I've always written fantasy. So it's wondering like, how did that, how, how do you do that? Like, how did you jump in from one pool to the other? So I can take creepy notes over here and like, make sure I don't mess anything up. Right. Like, oh my gosh. You could not mess anything up. It's still spicy. Like it's still like a romance novel. You know what I mean? Like yes. in, in the best, absolute best ways. So how did you like, how did you, Turn, was it hard to change genres? Was it or not? Yeah, was it hard to like do that? And after after so many years of being able to like play in one sandbox, how was that? Yes, um, it wasn't as hard as I think it would have been. Um, I've been an avid reader for ever, and like I like that's what I would read as my my escape, you know, for craft and always getting inspiration. I would always read contemporary, but to just purely escape, I would go for paranormal and fantasy and urban fantasy. And just all of that stuff as my just treat to myself whenever I would meet a deadline. So I was consuming it. And I always, you know, sometimes in contemporary, I'd be writing and I'm like, can I just magic this door away or something? Like, it's in my way. And so I think I was really excited to jump into a world. And not that you can just magic anything away in paranormal, but it's fun to think that, well, we'll just explain that with magic. And then your editor's like, no, actually, you really need a reason. Yeah. I'm like, I'm it's sorry. magic. Oh, I have to world build? <laughs> I don't know about right. That. Yeah. No, there's, That's yeah. Right. You have to have a whole set of rules and abide by them. Okay. But I yeah. Know. Um, so it wasn't as hard of a shift. It was, um, there was a lot more action involved, a lot more action scenes involved that I did have in contemporary, which what it did take me a little bit more to get into and to remember, Oh, there's a guy standing over here. I need to have him come in and do that. something and not just hover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that, that was a little bit of a little bit of a transition. Yeah. I have I, every book I've ever done has fight scenes and it's like, Ah, there's, it's like, I can imagine my character being like, oh, we're done. We're done. Ah, there's two more over there that we can, it's like, I'm, I'm there's sorry. two more guys. <laughs> I forgot. There's two more. I know. You do action scenes so well. Oh, I love your you. action scenes. Uh, that's and your old... swoon. I mean, I'm like hey. so team Seth over here. When well, I met him, I was like, hello, Seth. I, I, yeah, you <laughs> Thank have, you. You gotta have the good, the good love interest or I mean, yeah. or it's just not, it's, you know, it oh, just falls was... flat if it doesn't. So you did. Wonderful job, but that's oh, uh -huh. thank you, thank you. The you action scenes it. are always <laughs> they're always. In fact, shout out Anna and Antros, and it's like uh, I'm I'm writing it. I'm not even like physically doing anything, but I'm tired for them, and I'm like I'm really oh, sorry, yeah. right? Because I mean, Harley had to go. How many demons does she fight in this thing? I want a tally because she has to fight so many. Oh and man, and they're destroying a. I don't even have store. a tally. Like they're doing hated <laughs> things and she has to like handle it. I know. I know. I know. I don't even have a tally. That's how many she comes in, in into contact with. It's insane. She just, that she, she has a lot of stuff thrown at her and, but her that, character and her journey just, it, it called for it. It just called for it. <laughs> and you're kind of like, I'm sorry, but I wanted to ask about, I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You feel bad, but then like not bad enough to not do it that I'm going to put you through this, but yeah. <laughs> I also wanted to ask about sisters. Cause I know both of our books have sister bonds yes. that are important. And, and I, I love, that. And I love Ray. She was just like, protect Ray at all costs. Everyone, no one do anything to her. I kept thinking like Molly, if something happens to this little girl, I'm going to be very upset with you. <laughs> but yes. I, I have heard that. I won't spoil anything, but I absolutely yeah, how no spoiler. What did you? Why did you feel like that was like? How did you know that Harley was going to have a sister? Like, what what point in the writing process were you like, oh, this obviously? Or was it just I like just she yes, she kind of just materialized as when Harley, because like Harley and Draven have been hanging around in my head for a long, long time, and Ray came onto the scene when the book actually got to be, oh, this is actually going to happen, and. She just came out. She just popped out of a scene one day, you know, right in early conception. And I just realized that this Ray was uh, Harley's 
heart, basically her, the one thing that's kept her going throughout all of this, um, very hard upbringing, very horrible upbringing. Like she had something to live for that was so worth living for. It couldn't just be like, you know, it had to be something that she wanted to fight for tooth and nail and Ray just fully materialized on her own. <laughs> and she was not going anywhere, which I love about her. And she is, she's just this, she's just kind of this balance in the book, which, you know, and sisters are usually balances to each other. You know, there's always, I feel like that at least in my, with my sister, we're definitely completely different, but we balance each other out. And that's something that in your book you did so well. I loved all three sisters. Their dynamics were so fantastic. And it just, it just really pulled on your heartstrings and it's just the best. I just, I love this book. Everybody needs to buy this book. It's so good. I love the sister aspect. So, and I, and three, three is an odd number. So that was even harder. I bet to, to, to juggle. I only had two and Ray's much younger. So that was a little bit of a, of a gap, but luckily I have a seven year old. So it was a little easier to get into that voice, but I couldn't imagine juggling three sisters. So kudos to you. Oh, Cause it was you. very well done. I have a seven year old too. I, it's funny. Cause I just, oh, okay. Okay. I can't imagine having my daughter be, a, you know, hunted. I, I, I'm glad I kind of made that disassociation. I didn't like go, oh, Ray is seven. So is Aaron. I didn't do that because I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been right. like, oh no, she's too little for all of this. No, she has to be in her room. Right, watching. right. I don't know. Peppa Pig. She cannot be Peppa. doing anything. <laughs> yes, Peppa. What is happening? <laughs> yes, no, I know. Yes. No. <laughs> I, I have my, well, I have three oh. sisters. So we're one of, I'm one of four. Oh. So I kind okay. of like made a amalgam. I, I took the parts that I love about them the parts that I get upset about with them and I kind of made these other sisters but some someone said I was on a chat that. and my the sister that I have like the most conflict with just because we're most alike pulled up and someone said uh she's like she said something to me and I was like I'm gonna tell everyone that the mean sister just got here and they're gonna have to figure out <laughs> <laughs> but that like, is so epic I love that oh man I, <sighs> but you know like all the mean parts are like if they if they read it they're like that's you did that, not me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, did, did I? Right. I don't did know. I or was that you? Do you even know? <laughs> I don't even remember Who's anymore. That, oh, we did, and there's three of us, and we remember that you did that. Anyway, whoops. But <laughs> I was gonna ask. I you love also, that. I hate this question, but I love this question because I can never, I can never answer it. So maybe you'll inspire okay. me. What is your favorite character in this book? Oh yeah. This is so hard. Yeah. This is like the impossible question. And we, and it is, it's always on the list of who. So obviously Harley means a lot to me. She means yeah. so much, but she was also the hardest to write, even though it is her point of view, she's very stubborn. So digging out her voice was very, very hard. Um, and there's a lot of personal experiences of mine into Harley, but I swear like the favorite character that just like surprised me out of the whole novel was, it's a, he's a, he's only in there for just a few minutes, but his name's Kazuki. He's a warlock and he kind of kicked the door in and was like, hello, I'm here. And he was like, I just had a, like, I had so many awesome thoughts for him in the future. And it was just like, it was so cool. Like he was just a fun, it was just one of those times where a fully fleshed character just came on the page and was like, I'm going to have a minute here. Was he <laughs> and it was just perfection suit? and I love it. And he was wearing the suit, you know, he's rocking that supernatural nightclub, you know, he's the owner of it. And it just, I, I just, I, I loved him. So he's probably, I would say my favorite surprising character, but Harley and Ray will always be like, you know, my baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh guess. yeah. 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 It's, it's, that's such an impossible question. It's like, which one of your kids do you like more? And you're like, it is. can you, can you, who's your, who's your favorite? It's hard no. to answer, right? Like I asked you that so that you wouldn't ask me this. I, <laughs> I think it was Seth, Maddox. Seth. Seth oh, yes. But I think oh, Maddox was, like, was awesome. You're writing a character and you're like, this everything they're doing is so reprehensible. How am I ever going to get them out of this? How am I ever going to make them not oh. just awful? You know, like. I got, I got, got chills just now because I just remember the scene, how you did. And I'm just like, ah, so good. <laughs> you were the best. I'm not out of here with such a like. A, like a, a feeling of like, I could do any sort of writing and then I'm going to sit back down on my computer and be like, yes, I'm on a writer's high. And then sit down and be like, Oh yeah. And provide <laughs> text me. I'll be your cheerleader. I'll pump you up. We all need those. We, all <laughs> we really do. Especially after this year, um, year and a half, yes. four years is time real. Um, 
I keep I wonder, saying a year, but I know it's been longer. <laughs> it's been like a year and a half, but it feels like it's been, yeah, like uh, time doesn't yes. exist anymore. And I know everything's starting to go back to normal, mm-hmm. but it's like, is it though? It's like we're all kind of like tentatively like putting our hands out. Like, right. We're it? like, yes, I don't exactly. Right now. No, that's, and I mean, how did you, speaking of like going and like making a character that is, uh, not I hate favorite but you know how did you like develop her voice because I love that it was a paranormal story but she felt so contemporary and I loved her little like I wrote my little notes like when she was like you can't have my blood I need that fluid like she just had such like a oh yeah voice I loved did that come really naturally or did you feel like like from writing more contemporary did that come more naturally or did, was it something that you had to hone specifically for Harley I think in her case, it was something that we did have to specifically just sharpen and sharpen because she did have so much snark. And just because of her upbringing, you know, there was a certain um, quality to her that she, you know, she's balancing between Ray as her light and the dad as her dark. And like, she's tr- she finds humor in the darkest situations, which I love. And yeah, she had so much snark in her that we had to make sure it was a good balance of like, where she's not like beating you over the head with it, with the attitude. And so it was, it was a dual effort between me and my editor um, of finding this, this perfect recipe of her words. Cause sometimes she would just go off, you know, because she's like, I've had this life I'm done, you know? And it was great to find um, that she could find humor in certain dark situations because she's like, if I don't, then I'm just going to be like sad and depressed all the time, which I'm not going to stand for, which I love. Cause I feel like there's, you know, everybody's different everybody handles the situation differently. So, um, I really liked how, how she did, how she did come out with that attitude. <laughs> yeah. That was really like, she balanced, she was in such a dark, like such dark situations. Like the demons were nothing compared to her own dad. Like just the situations that she had right. to walk through. And the fact that she knew that was like really hard in a good way. Like the fact that she knew she was going to be walking into the situation every time she opened her door, like this is going to be something that happens. But like, how did you, I know that w- when I write things, sometimes you have to go into this headspace and you're like, did you ever have that? Like, how do you deal with that feeling of like, I don't, I have to have this character's journey be what it is. And I know it's going to be hard. Yeah. Like, did you, how did you like build a mental, like, did you do the compartmentalization thing? Cause I know she does, but like, how did you right? Like, she does. <laughs> Um, well, and yeah, this, there it is such hard situations at any time, uh, Harley's father and her, or anytime he was on the page, it was a really hard scene to write. Um, like I said, I've, I drew on my own experience in the past. I have non-familial, uh, abuse in my past. And so I drew on that. And then, so yeah, it did take me to a very dark place. And there were times where I was like, Oh, I'm going to fade to black. I'm just going to fade to black because I can't handle but then I thought it would be doing a, a major disservice to her character and to anybody who might relate to her situations. And so I was like, nope, we're going to get in this and we're going to show up for what it is. And it was really like a cathartic process um, as well as just, it, it was, you were, I'm just like the whole day was done. You know, I was in a dark place all day um, because of it. Cause I was so into it, but I just, I didn't want to take the easy route um, in that situation for Harley because I know she wouldn't want me to, you know, she would want people who relate to her journey to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that it's not a weakness to ask for help and that you can survive this and you are worth everything. And so it was very, very hard. And there were times that we did fade to black um, on certain things because they weren't necessary to be on the page, but the, the few times that they were, it was very hard to get through. And uh, I would be like crying through the scene and my like son would come in and be like, what's wrong? Are you hurt? I'm like, no. And he's like, are you just crying over a book? Like he's sick. So he was like, what are you, I don't understand. I'm like, it's yeah. okay. So just keep it's going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's story. But being, being authentic was really, really important to me. So <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like too many times things cut fade to black. And so they allow people to kind of live, in a state where they don't have to ever grapple with somebody else's pain because they don't ever have to see it. So you, I think you did a really good job because it was never, it never felt like it was too much. You know what I mean? It was, it was like, but I mean, it was, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, I, that's a weird way to say it, but it felt like it was. No, no, yeah, I get it. <laughs> it was enough to bring me into the story without making me feel like I, I can't go back there. It's so scary. Um, more demons. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. It, I appreciate that. <laughs> no, it was excellent. And I was just, 
yeah, I was I, the fact that her father was the biggest monster in a book full of monsters is such a like a feat that you did so beautifully. Um, oh, and thank I, you. Well, I and I was I want to know more about if you could also your editorial process in terms of like you said this was in your head for a, an untold number of years. So like, yes, <laughs> did stories stay the same i guess i have a i have that story too where it's, you know, but i was like i was 15 and i'm like oh magic i'm gonna write a book and i tried it you know like 12 times and it was really bad um there are vampires oh, that's they, awesome it wasn't good it was bad uh hey, but we all need vampires always <laughs> <laughs> i'll make it better i uh, um but i like when you said hey me you know pick me which i love i love that you like i, I just love that you see that moment so it's better for all of us um oh thank you <laughs> how did you like how how much of it changed how much of it shifted and do you think it changed because you're older now like i find that stories that you create in your head when you're younger they evolve with you as you go through things and like did that happen with this one yes 100 percent, absolutely so some of the basic the world they were in stayed the same the characters the two harley and draven were always harley and draven um they did become more three-dimensional over the years though i believe and the circumstances became a lot more grave and a lot more gritty than they were back when i first conceptualized it because i wasn't i hadn't had those experiences fully yet so yeah it did it changed so much and i just got super lucky because you know my editor she read the first draft and she was like this is awesome but i know that there's like this this and this i, I think you have this it's woven, but it's not fully unpacked. And I would be like, oh yeah, boom, that's exactly what it needs. And so we were a really great team and it became, it really became our baby. Like it, it really did. It was like something that I had forever. And then when we got together and just were like rolling on it, it just was a great working process. And I, I'm so, so happy. Cause I did try, I tried to get it. I tried to get this published way back in the day. I was just shy of that paranormal bubble. So it was a little too late, but I'm so glad. I'm so grateful for it. I was devastated back then. But oh, yeah. I feel like it's such a better story now. Yeah. That I'm so yeah. grateful it didn't happen, you know, and I've learned so much since this is the second book I ever read. The, fir the first book was in a drawer that we'll never talk about, but <laughs> yeah. this is the second one I ever wrote. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's changed. Um, in a ton, a ton, so many drafts. I can't even tell you how many drafts I've had of this on my computer, but yeah. I am so grateful because it is, it's, this is the story it was always meant to be. I really feel that in my heart. So I just, it, it was definitely a, a process, but it was one for the better. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have the bookshelf behind me. Can't really see it. It's full of the, the show, the stuff we shall not be named where it's like the stories that you're going to have to like uh, we're gonna maybe wait till I'm a little more mature and can you know I'm 32. <laughs> right. I'm gonna wait until I'm like smarter <laughs> to handle this one. <laughs> right. And then it's like you're never years. really, you know, <laughs> never really yeah. ready. You're never really yeah. ready to deal with what all that was back in the day. But you know, it, it know. found its time. So you never know. <laughs> I remember Rem Rainbow mm. Rowell saying once at a at a panel because they said like why do why do you write for teens? And she said like I had to wait until I was in my thirties and forties to process what had happened to me. I didn't have anything to say until then. And then I had something to say yes. about those years. So I think there's something about it waiting for the right time. Cause I wonder, I wonder if you would have been able or had the, you know, emotional like experiences that you needed to make it what it is, you know? So yeah, you forget no, that's a hundred percent correct. Yes, yeah. that's absolutely correct. That That's a really well put because it's true. And it's like when you look back, you're like, oh, well, yeah, that wasn't worth saying. This is worth saying now that I've learned from it and, you know, grieved from it and done all the all the steps you're supposed to after, you know, how many ever years later. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really well said. Oh, yeah, I processed <laughs> my trauma. We're good. And then you open up a book, start writing it, and you're like, I'm, I'm still working through it. Yeah. But that's, yeah. Then that's all of it comes out. And you're just I, like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. And then your kids come in and go, why are you crying? And you're like, mm -hmm. we'll talk about it. Never. Oh, when you're older. Actually, you can just yeah. read the book. Yeah. Ten right. Maybe. <laughs> in 10, 10 years. <laughs> in 10 years. I know. I, I keep thinking like, how am I going to redact stuff so my kids can just like 
sort of read it and then not really. I don't know. What, what, I they're my oldest is seven. Your oldest is seven. We have a while to figure mm -hmm. it out, right? Okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Hopefully by then we'll have like kids versions, and then. Yeah. I don't know. She keeps trying to read over my shoulder while I'm writing and I'm like, stop. I'm like, I have to actually get her out of the room now. Cause she's like super, she's an avid reader. And like, she'll yep. be like, Oh, you're da, 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 da. And I'm like, no, no, no. Stop reading that line. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> your sister are like hacha matcha as Zoe Deschanel says in right. new girl. And right. so like having, yeah. That, and, and, that show. Oh yeah. With the, I, I need to, I need to make sure that everyone I'm around always gets the references. So I'm glad we've made that. We understand oh, each other. hundred percent. So Nathan is inspired by Jake, Jake Johnson from Nick Miller. Miller's is based off of, you know, my love for Nick oh, Miller. <laughs> I love that. Okay. That's named okay. It that. yeah. okay. Well, I'm going to have to reread it. I, I, I'm him. a super fan of Nick Miller. <laughs> okay. But, but Nick Miller as like a responsible adult, like that would almost be too much to handle in terms of like, I'm sorry, Draven, move uh, yeah. over. Having like No, a, it would. It really would. Like a, a responsible, responsible well, like. Yeah, like a pr protective older brother sort of Jake Johnson. Oh no, oh no. Well, now, mm -hmm. now you got me yep, thinking. Yeah, but that's I was, uh, <laughs> whew, got off on the wrong a tangent. New, so, yeah. What? Oh yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, new girl, new girl nerds. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so, but I always go hacha matcha, and people are like, "What are you talking?" I was like, "That's yes. like season one where she's like super awkward." Um, I mean, she's super awkward, awkward. <laughs> like extra awkward. I love it, but. Speaking of extra awkward, like, have I, I get asked this all the time, and now I want to know because I, I don't know how I don't think anybody has like the same answer, and it's so interesting to me. Like, has this past year and has writing this book with kids, like, I mean, I guess he wrote it long before the pandemic with Tiny, I don't know, whatever. Um, but how has writing <laughs> just in general, like, how does it feel to like you? You're at the finish line, you this is your like, your book is out this week, like. Does it feel really triumphant? And and how has that been in the year where kids go, Mom, you're trying to like write this spicy scene with this like angel demon man? Right. Um, because I'm <laughs> still deciding if I think he's one or the other. Um, so mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? How do you protect that time? Oh, you're yeah, that's so that's such a good question. Especially so I never really experienced writer's block until 2020, <laughs> like until the yeah. pandemic, like I've been, I've usually like, I've felt very fortunate and very lucky. I'm knocking on wood that I had never experienced it before then I could just sit down and I could write and it never, you know, it doesn't always mean it's the best, but I can always go back and edit it. So that was something yeah. I never experienced. And then 2020 hit and I was rewrite, I was rewriting a bunch of this book and it was like, I kept getting stuck on certain things because it was just everything going on in the world was so exhausting. And I feel like a lot of authors and writers had that problem because not only are you being emotionally drained for your work, because that's just something that naturally happens when we write these books, you know, we're putting everything our, ourselves into the characters, then you're also being emotionally drained uh, outside of work because you can't, can't control what's happening. You can't help everybody. It's just, it was a crazy thing. But um, yeah, with the kids being back home, it was, it was quite a, a balance. I always say like, oh, we found balance finally, but it's never really like you yeah. always have controlled chaos. I feel like. Yeah. Like I always joke like, oh, we'll get it together next week. And we never do. But like, I was very <laughs> fortunate, Darren. My husband was home a lot and he helped me. He, he would help me sneak off and I would write for a few hours and we would kind of tag team. And um, again, it's always just finding finding that time when they were babies. I would write on the kitchen counter and like watch them in the playroom because they're 17 months apart. So they were very close. And so I'd like, write a paragraph and then I'd run and change a diaper and come back and write a paragraph. So I think it's always evolving when you have kids and you're an author. I don't, I, I just think you're always adapting to a new, you know, a new normal when they're teens, who knows, they might be in here like texting while I'm trying to write a scene. So I, I know. know. <laughs> I just was thinking about Draven and all his corded muscle. And then like, a, I know that little like, knock, knock, knock. Hey mom, um, the toilet's backed up. And you're like, <sighs> right. <laughs> in the headspace. Like, Great. And I'm out. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. I just whispered to my, you know, whispered like Seth, we'll finish this later. I have to go handle. Oh, I know. Situation. Seth is so dreamy. Oh, but Seth is so dreamy. The minute he gets that mug brownie, I'm like, you have my heart forever. I, I, yeah, exactly. I, yeah, that's, it's based on, I mean, I love supportive men. So I love that Draven was like, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. And it, it was just the difference between, 
I sorry, I don't want to spoil it. I can't I can't figure out if I should like wink at you or things, but like, you know, I just love yeah. <laughs> love being a supportive love interest who believes that the woman can handle or the, you know, th can handle any situation and not have to be like protected. And I kept waiting also like Sorry, I'm gonna ask like one more question and then there's like two more little ones and then we have uh, some audience questions if that's okay with you. So no, you're, yeah, okay. you're perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just want to make sure that we're good on time. But I was wondering how you avoided and how important it was for you to avoid the trap of the damsel in distress. Cause I kept waiting for her to get like, cause she would she'd be in this position and I'm like, okay, okay. You know, Edward Cullen's gonna like swoop in here on his car, you know, like right. Draven's gonna come in and he's gonna kick their butts and they're mm -hmm. gonna be in so much trouble. And we did get enough of that where it was like, woo, you know, but he didn't save her all the time. And he, like, he didn't save her, she saved herself. Most of the story, she's saving herself. So how did, was that a conscious, obviously, I feel like it was, cause I see like you're going, mm -hmm. but yes. like, how did you avoid yes. the, like the swooning damsel to make us, you didn't rely on him saving her to make us like him. How did you do that? I, I love that you said that. I really, really appreciate that. Um, I feel like for Harley's journey in particular, especially what she goes through with her, her father, and not having any choice or any control of that situation, which is so, so devastating. She is the damsel in that situation, but it's such a dark situation that nobody can get her out of that except for her. Like she, it, it has to be her. And so all these other things that start happening outside of her, her family world, when it starts happening in the supernatural world and she's meeting all of these challenges, she's realizing how much she has grown and gained strength from the, the experiences from the home. So I, I, there were times where I felt like Draven was like, hello, stop benching me. I need to get in here. But for Harley, it's just, that's not going to fly. Like she has to take ownership of her own situation and she's not going to let anybody else like bleed for her, so to speak. Um, and especially not when it comes to her sister. So it was, it was a very conscious choice, but I also loved how Draven, he's not exactly a, a white knight either. And she needed somebody like him who she didn't need Captain America. She needed Loki. She needed him to break through those walls. She needed that mirror. Like that's kind of how their relationship is. And there are, there are situations where you need Cap. You need Cap to go in and save you. But for Harley, she needed, she needed the mind challenges and the, the banter. And so I was channeling that and I feel like, you know, Draven or Loki would stand back and kind of watch this happen and see what, see if she can, you know, pull herself out of that hole. So it was, it was super fun to write. <laughs> okay. So more Marvel references. And I just, I yeah. just got a <laughs> sidebar real quick. We're like, you are completely obsessed just like me, right? We're like, just, just making sure that we are obsessed. on the same page. The Marvel is <laughs> okay. Double checking. Cause you kept, yes. I was like, yeah, he's he's been asleep for a long time. They wake him when they need him. It's like oh, Bucky. <laughs> and then you're like you're like the Winter Soldier. Oh, Harley. Bucky! Mm -hmm. Love that your brain is there, girl. Um, yeah, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> oh, love it. Um, okay, and I'm I'm trying to pick and choose these questions because you are just you're you're too fascinating, <laughs> Molly. Um, okay. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> And I know everybody is dying to ask you questions, so I'm gonna like finish up and then get out of line so that they can have their turn. Um, <laughs> what is, if you could have someone, if you had somebody in front of you that needed to hear one thing and take one thing away from this book, what would it be? Oh, that's such a great question. Yeah, um, good luck with that one. Yes, I know I have this one because I. I've been thinking about it a lot because I've been getting with the early readers, um, just some great messages and heartfelt responses. So for Harley, Harley would want anybody relating to her character and her situation to, to understand that it doesn't matter where you were born, who you were born, what family you were born into. It doesn't matter like where you came from. You are in control of your own fate and you don't need anybody's permission to be happy. You don't need their permission. You don't, you're not going to get a medal for being miserable because you're trying to fit yourself into a box that doesn't work for you. You mm -hmm. need to find your tribe and just be happy. And usually when that happens, when you're taking care of your own happiness, the people around you are better for it. And you're better able to serve those people who might need you in a, in a different way and you're in learn from your experiences. So I believe that's what Harley would want anybody who identifies with her to, to take away. Like you're worth it. And yeah, 
that and I think that's so we can all just pretend we're Ray and Harley's taking care of us and telling us all the stuff we need to hear and so we can go be our own <laughs> right. badass. And then I also have to ask right. because you mentioned Bishop Briggs so much. What is your favorite oh, yes. song on the Ember playlist? Because I know that oh, you had definitely Oh, I'm a nut. I'm a nut with playlists. Like oh, I yeah. have a song for every chapter of this book. Like it, it's just, um, but Bishop Briggs, she's on the playlist a lot, but white flag by Bishop Briggs is probably my favorite Harley song. It's like her anthem. I feel like, because she's like not waving my white flag. I don't care what you do to me. I'm, I'm going down swinging. And so I feel like that just, that's just her. Harley hundred yeah. percent. So yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and do you do that before or does the playlist kind of come to you as you are writing? Oh, it definitely gets sharpened as we go. And so once we get to the end of the book, I finally know like exactly what songs they are. But yeah, I have I have playlists for every stage of the book and I even score the book with instrumentals and <laughs> just music really motivates me. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. Bishop, her, her voice just screamed Harley to me. So it was awesome. <laughs> I love that. I love hearing because I always I always wonder that because I do that, too. I have the the big playlists and like the Pinterest board and, like this moment at 234 is when this happens. Yes. Yeah, we gotta get like a Danny, yes. we gotta get the Edward Scissorhands grand finale song in here. And this is when this moment, when the music swells, mm -hmm. this is what happens. And I feel like I I yes. can't put that in there unless I do like an annotated thing. But I love when authors drop little hints because I can kind of get in their brain and be like, this is what you were listening to, huh? Cause like, I can, I love yes. it. It's like a little, to all the music lovers. That's awesome. Love it. Um. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It was, it was fantastic. And then, um yeah hold on uh, now i think we should probably get to these wonderful audience questions if that is okay with you okay. let, me yes. see if I can, let me see if i can do this uh, you think after a year of being just on tech i wouldn't be so tech challenged but i no, i feel you it's like always changing all right so we love the mythos in your book can you talk about how you do your world building and is there research and planning involved beforehand as you go? Yeah, tell me all this stuff. I know you mentioned like ancient civilizations and things, but as a preacher's kid, mm -hmm. I was going like, hmm, this is super interesting. I like, the, you know, seven levels of hell and or nine levels of hell and all that stuff. Tell me everything. Yes, there's definitely, that's one of the funnest things is the research. I mean, it also can be very terrifying at like 2 a.m. and it's dark and you hear something outside. Yeah, were you scared? But, um, I'd be yeah, scared. I was having nightmares. I was having nightmares um, throughout this book. Uh, but yeah, the research, I, I dug into like all kinds of demon lore, which is a fun rabbit hole to go down if you're really looking for a fun, let's just blow your mind challenge. There's so yep. many different, I mean, so many thousands of kinds of demons lore. And it was really fun to pull on the great research and history that's been before this and kind of shape it to fit my world. And I wanted to do all different kinds. I wanted to do like, you know, the lower levels that, you know, they're basically animalistic. And then I wanted the higher level thinking ones that really keep you on your toes. And I always love, like, I'm, you know, I was raised on Buffy and Angel and Supernatural and all those shows that really just make you think. And so in Constantine, like we talked about, like I wanted, I wanted to have um, some three dimensional demons on the page. And so that was super fun. Uh, one of the demons actually came so my six-year-old son, he unfortunately was, he has my brain and he doesn't watch bad stuff at all, but he has like really bad night terrors. And one night he just had a really bad night terror about this crazy, like canine wolf hybrid thing. And I don't know how it came into his mind, but I stole it and I put it in this book because it terrified me. And so he was the creator. He has no idea that he created one of the monsters in the book, but I think he'll be happy to learn that uh, when he's older. But I have no idea where it came from still to this day. Like, I was like, you watch Paw Patrol. Like, is this, did this come from Paw Patrol? <laughs> like, I have no idea. But um, I think he just has my mind. So that's, uh, that was kind of a fun part of pulling just from a raw place and then also combining it with the research. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> like, thanks for using my, uh, my nightmares, my traumatic experiences, mother. Then if I, I, if I use I'm my terrible. Kids. I, yeah, if I use my kids, it'd be like a sentient peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and it would chase them down the hallway or something. It wouldn't be scary at all. Uh, but I, I, right, my son's been really into uh, watching Walking Dead. He comes in like, "What you watching? You watching zombies? 
And then I'll, I'll be like, oh. ah, and he's four, and I feel terrible because I know he's seen, like, but what do you, you know what? I saw scary stuff, and I turned out okay. <laughs> so, right, exactly, totally. And you know what? They have to, I feel like you got to see some scary stuff in order to be able to process the scary stuff in the world. This isn't scarier than <sighs> anything else. That's but, true. A lovely reader would like to know if this is a series. And it better friggin' be yes. after that cliffhanger. Oh my gosh, thanks so you did that. get to the end. I was wondering. Oh man. So, um, yes, yes it is going to be a series. It was just a little sharp turn. Just a sharp turn. Oh, just the, a tiny one? The <laughs> what? So the cool thing is, though, <laughs> my publisher got me the date to where it comes out in November. So we don't have to wait a year and a half or a year for the next book. So it comes out in November. Um, I'm working on it now. And so that it will be a series. I believe it's three. As of right now, it's three. So it's going to be a series. And I'm super in love with it. And I can't oh, talk about the sequel at all. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, okay. Rude. But yeah. <laughs> I, got to that, I got to that last line. And my little, like, Church of Christ grown up heart was like, <gasps> so... You freak me out, and thank you very much for that. Um, okay. Yeah, Sorry. Oh How dare. How dare. Um, did you know the ending? You? Do you know the ending? Or did you know the ending when you started? Did it change? And do you know where this? how this ends? Like, do you have the fates of these characters that now mean a lot to everybody in your head, and you're just holding them like a little baby bird? Like, do you know where this is going? Are you ready to do it? Mm, All that jazz? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I yeah I can see the world um I kind of know where we're going and I didn't know where exactly this book was going to end I didn't know it until we wrote that line and then I was like oh that's the end yeah. and it just kind of hit me and I didn't know if my you know I didn't know what my editor was going to say <laughs> I was like I said it to her I was like you're either gonna love this or you're gonna hate it um and she loved it so it was awesome and I just felt like for her journey um it left too many questions. So there was just, you needed, I needed more space to deal with those. So in the second book, more questions will be unpacked. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Harley has a lot to deal with now. She, yeah. she had enough to deal with already in the book one. I think that you are a beautiful monster and the stuff you write. <laughs> is Thank you yeah, so okay. much. <laughs> yeah, that's the nicest compliment a writer can give another writer. Like you're you're sadistic and cruel and you're wonderful. Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> let's see. Um, how about huh, they want to know what book do you wish you could write if you could write anything? Uh, either mm. one of us. If we could write anything, what we have, what would be like if we could do anything like. I'm assuming that means that they were like, hey, here's a huge advance and a villa oh. right to George Clooney. Or does that mean something that maybe oh. I could ask the writer or the, who, who wrote that? Do you mean like anything that has been written? Do, you, do we wish we had written ourselves? Or do you saying like, hey, oh. here's $100,000 and go live in Lake Cuomo and write something? Like that's Oh, I love that. I love that idea. Let's do that. <laughs> okay, Let's make that happen. <laughs> It's your birthday, so you can be <laughs> right next door to George, and I'll be on the right. other side of you. Okay, that sounds All right. fair. That sounds awesome. Okay, what, what would it be? Okay, if they I were think like, that sounds really good. Dream book that if your editor and publisher didn't stop you. Okay. Oh, because oh. you have so many. We both have those where it's like the market isn't quite there yet, or like we can't do that yet, or okay, so like yeah. big dream. Whoa, dream big. Go ahead. Oh, this is so hard. Well, like my bucket list, and it, it, I, I don't know if it'll, if it's even a possibility, but I would love to write like literally anything for Marvel, as you know, oh, yeah. Marvel, oh, yeah. uh, huge Marvel, Marvel. anything Marvel. to do with Marvel, but like any kind of like Loki inspired fan story, I probably would love to write. I love this character. Obviously, they're coming out with the show now, so we're gonna get to dive deeper into the, into the one Tom Hiddleston created. But I'm like, I'm super obsessed with that character and I would love to write something that's either even remotely similar to that storyline, I guess yeah. you could say. That would be, hey. so Marvel and Loki, anything like that. <laughs> it looks like, I mean, it, it looks like we're going to get a big multiverse situation where there are a thousand Lokis. So 
the opportunity to write one of his stories should be very, you know, open. That would be right. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Well, I mean, obviously, I'll steal your answer. Anything like if Marvel was like, hey, would you like to write a, about a bug that witnesses one of the fights between Cap it. and Bucky <laughs> and then gets stepped on? I'd say I will take five dollars and dedicate my life to that bug POV book. Yep. I will do it. Um, hi, Marvel. We're not desperate. Absolutely. Hit us up. No. Um, yes. But I have a, <laughs> This is where we can do. We'll find us here. Oh yes! Hello, <laughs> hi. Look at those beautiful published books. I how, how like yes. awesome. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Something important, I'm sure. Oh, I have a uh, a big sprawling fantasy with the world building that's just bonkers. Um, that I would. That's like a ser- It's an adult fantasy that I've had in my brain Ooh. since college, and it's like the girl who gets swept away into an adventure and then gets dropped off, you know, like kind of the, I'll come back for you and you're the princess of the other world. And then like, what happened? She doesn't get picked up. And like, she turns into an adult. That's kind of like that. Yeah. Anyway, um, very inspired by Lucy Pevin. And I keep working on it and it keeps getting, keeps getting more bonkers. So I don't know if it will ever see the light of the light of day, but I'm going to keep working on it. Oh, it should. You should let it just be bonkers because it's probably the best. The bonkers, the, the more bonkers, <laughs> the better it gets. And also, like, Tom Holland is on my yep. mood board for this book. Oh, yes. Uh, so, if it's Tom Holland on the mood board, what are you going to do? Not write the book? Like, that's just... No, it. you have to. You have to write it. You have to write it. Have to. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I think I would do that. And then, you know what? I'd be so excited about this book. I'd finish it. I'd turn it in, and they'd be like, how was your time? I'm like, Cuomo with George Clooney. And I'd say, I was inside, and I didn't go outside once, and... That's how much right? I love this book. It was a waste of time to give me yep. a villa on like Cuomo. Um, okay, so yes. what are some of our favorite reads? Oh, this is a fun card. Well, right now, Unchosen. I just finished this one a couple weeks ago, and I'm obsessed. So everybody needs to get this. It's awesome. One. Yes, love no, it. I love this one. It's um, I had the Crimson Man. I was freaked out. And it's so spot on, especially for what happened in 2020. This is, it's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's action packed. It's swoon worthy. It's got the sister love. Like I have been geeking out over it and I've been telling everybody about it. So this one for sure. Oh, did I? And the other one I've been doing is from blood and ashes. (laughs) Oh, oh, okay. That's been on my TBR. Oh, you should read it. It's a fantastic. I'm excited about that one. Um, (laughs) And I think this, if you want to be scared, if The Conjuring didn't do it for you, and you're like, I want more <laughs> sleepless nights. Um, and then I've been reading, I've been rereading C.S. Lewis. So it's a nice balance. Oh, that's fun. My old theology books that I read in college mixed with, you know, demons coming out of a sparring ring with creepy faces. And I'm like, I see both of you. Um, so that's, I love that. You just gotta, you gotta mix it up, man. Have it. Yeah. Okay, hold awesome. on. What would you say to someone? Okay. Wow. To, <laughs> um, I, I know this is actually my husband's question, uh, because he is a clinical psychologist and he's listening to this and he wants to know, what would you oh. say to somebody who's reading your book and struggling to process their own traumatic experiences? Wow, this is such a great question. Um, I, gosh, so I I do not have a psychology degree, so I can go up front and say that. But I would probably just, I don't know if I would say anything, but except for that I'm listening. And just, I, I no judgment, just let it out. Tell me I'm here, I'm listening, and you are worth it. So you're worth whatever pain you need to get through to get to the other side and get to your own happiness. And just that you're not alone. Because I feel like in those situations, especially with the goal of the abuser, is to make you feel alone and make you feel like there's literally no way out. And whatever you have to cling to to find your way out, it is absolutely worth it. And you should go for it. (laughs) Well, that's beautiful and hopeful and lovely. And my goodness, (laughs) you're bringing that to the table. And I'm like, George Clooney. So I just... My goodness, you're wonderful. No, that was a very uh, serious question. That's a serious question. It was. I, 
Okay. Good one, Ross. Sorry. And I know that's for my husband because he's <laughs> he's excited and he's been listening. So uh Aww, yeah, we already talked about that. tough for you to write that. So I guess I don't know. Are we do we have anything else we need to wrap up besides the fact that you're lovely and wonderful and a monster and Aww. now I'm scared and excited for <laughs> Thank November? you. And it's your birthday. Oh, thank so. you so much. I know. Yes. Thank you. Birthday, you're Such a, a great day. <laughs> you're a monster. Yes. You're incredible. Thank you. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take it. <laughs> we both. Okay. Last so any questions, last questions, audience. Going once, going twice. Okay. I'm gonna do my the sad part of my job, which is uh wrapping up the evening. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. <laughs> thank you both for being here. Thank you to our audience for all the questions that you did ask and for sticking around for our virtual event. We really appreciate you guys. And so one more last minute reminder to go ahead and purchase Molly and Catherine's books. You guys can, oh, did a question literally pop into the box? <gasps> Damien has a question. He says, <laughs> oh, I, I yeah. asked it since I'm oh. in the middle of my outro. He says, will we see more okay. of Draven? Like more of Draven or like more of Draven? <laughs> uh, both. You should answer that question yeah. however you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's more. all I can say is yes. Just yes. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I'm legally bound to not say anything else. Okay. Well, anyone <laughs> who hasn't read the books and wants to know what all the hype about Draven is about, you should definitely click that green buy books button so you can purchase Molly's book. And you can also purchase Catherine's book through that link. So with that, yes, one more time, so thanks everyone for coming and hope you have a good night. Okay, good night everyone. We'll see you at the next one. Thank Bye you guys. so much for having Happy us. Birthday. Thank you.